The moon was shrouded in mist, its pale light seeping through the window, casting an eerie glow on the chalk circle etched on the floor. Lydia's bedroom was cloaked in shadows, save for the flickering candles that barely held most of the darkness at bay. She had lit them for protection. The scent of burning sage hung heavy in the air, mingling with the aroma of red wine that lingered on her breath. Lydia sat in the center of the circle, her eyes fixed on the grimoire resting heavy on her lap. The leather-bound tome was weathered and worn, its pages yellowed with age and use. It was well-loved. Her trembling fingers traced the ancient symbols etched into the margins, feeling a sense of both foreboding and excitement. She had found the grimoire in an obscure occult shop, hidden behind dusty tomes and strange artifacts. When she'd first touched it, it was as if the book had a life of its own, pulsing with energy and power. She felt the hum of it against her skin like a living thing. Now it was silent, and she wondered if the whole experience had been her own imaginings. The wine she had been sipping on had taken the edge off her nerves, but she could still feel her heart racing in her chest. The incantation written in the grimoire was a tongue-twisting chant, its syllables foreign and strange on her tongue. She spoke them softly, almost in a whisper, afraid of what might happen if she spoke too loudly. The candles flickered, casting dancing shadows on the walls. Lydia's eyes darted around the room, searching for any sign of movement, any indication that she was not alone. But the room remained still and silent, save for the sound of her own breathing. Lydia took a deep breath and opened her notes, reading the instructions for at least the twentieth time. Find a quiet and comfortable place where you will not be disturbed, she read. Sit or lie down and close your eyes. Focus on your breath, inhaling deeply and exhaling slowly. Lydia followed the instructions, taking a few deep breaths to calm her still racing heart. Visualize a silver cord extending from your physical body to your astral body. Imagine yourself leaving your physical body and traveling along this cord to your astral form. Allow your astral body to travel freely, exploring the astral plane as you see fit. When you are ready to return to your physical body, follow the silver cord back and allow yourself to gently merge back into your physical form. She meditated and visualized for as long as she could until, finally, a tingling sensation tickled the fingertips of her left hand. It spread slowly, but consistently. She almost chalked it up to her hand falling asleep, and nearly shook out her fingers to rid herself of the numbness. But then, she felt a strange sense of detachment from her arm entirely, as if she was hovering just above it. Panic gripped her, unsure of what was happening. Then the sensation just as suddenly stopped spreading and fled back down and out of her arm. It had been such an abrupt change that Lydia opened her eyes and looked around. After sitting silently and gauging her surroundings, she let out a gust of air in an annoyed huff. She looked down at her arm with a frown. Had it been real? Had it been just the pins and needles one felt from not moving a lengthy amount of time? Either way, the moment was broken. Well, that went horribly. Figures. She tossed the book aside, blew out the candles, and crawled into bed disappointed but not very surprised. The wisps of smoke that had emerged from the flames rose. They twisted and turned in the air, the pale glow of the moon illuminating them as they gathered above her like spindly fingers of an eerie hand. It was mesmerizing, and Lydia easily drifted off to sleep, watching them float around in the moonbeams, unaware that the wisps refused to dissipate. They continued to dance above her, moving closer and closer until they finally kissed her lips. On her next inhale, they poured into her through her soft, parted mouth. She shivered as they flowed into her, but she didn't wake. Instead, her limbs began to twitch, her eyes flickering under her eyelids. Her breathing quickened as her eyes shifted beneath her closed lids. And then just as suddenly, everything went still. Lydia's eyes stopped their frantic search, her breath caught within and held. Finally, the air trapped in her lungs expelled, and with it, a name. It was a name she occasionally, and quite accidentally, whispered on the wind in her sleep. A name she never dared say while awake, even only once. 
just in case it caught the attention of a certain poltergeist that had turned her world upside down once upon a time. Beetlejuice. Lydia's taut body went limp, anchored to the physical plane on her soft bed, but her spirit rose through her flesh as easy as melted butter, and in a blink in time, it vanished. Thank you for listening. You can find the written version of this story by clicking the link in the description. Please like and subscribe for more, and let me know what you think of this story.